Hey guys, in this in this lecture I'm going to show you some basic database modeling techniques using PARS. And yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to show you some basic database modeling techniques. So when you want to add a class, adding a class is similar to adding a table. It basically lets you, it basically lets you create custom data that you can store. So let's say in our case that we want to store a photo. In order to store a photo, we're going to create a custom class and we're going to call it photo. Now we can add columns, which are basically the variables that we want to store for this photo object. So every photo, it's going to be assigned to a user, right? So we need a user class. Now Parse has a user class built in already. So we can just create a user class and boom, that's done. You'll notice that each user has a username, password, uh, some other fields like e if the email is verified and the user's email. Now let's go back to our photo class and we want to create a pointer to that user which is basically a reference to a user object and we're going to call this column let's call it um, how about photographer so this is the user that took the photo right now let's say that we need well if, if we have a photo class right we have the user we also we also need to store the actual photo now parse lets us store actual files up to 10 megabytes large so we're just gonna create a file column and call it photo we're gonna drag this column over here all right fair enough now is there anything else we need for this photo class at the time being I don't think so I think this is all we need now we eventually we're also going to want to store a list of users that should see this photo right so but we won't worry about that quite yet we just we just want to set up a very simple implementation so what have we done we've created a user class and we've created a photo class the photo class hooks up to a user and it hooks up to a photo or it hooks up to a file which is called photo all right so now let's see how we can actually use this let's say that we want to I'm just gonna get rid of some of this stuff The first thing we're gonna do is let's just get rid of this Facebook sign-in button and let's create a new button we're gonna create a new button and we're gonna call it take photo for uh, let's see here take photo all right, and let's call this button main button take photo. Now, what happened? What we want is that whenever someone clicks this take photo button, we want the camera to pop up, right? Now we could do this tradition. We could do this the traditional route by doing this. For example, take photo button is equal to find view by ID main button take photo, and then we could do take photo button dot set on click listener. But I want to show you guys a much better approach for binding views to activities and fragments. We're going to use something called Butterknife. Butterknife Android. Butterknife is a really great library and it uses something called dependency injection. So the way it works is, well, we first actually need to include Butterknife in our project. Now the way we do that is, let's see here, there is a Gradle uh, link that we can basically point to. And we're going to go here, we're going to go here, and we're just going to compile this uh, Butterknife library. We're going to sync our Gradle repository. And now, in order to use Butterknife, what you have to do is you have to call this Butterknife.bind method. Once you do that, you can just say Butterknife.bind this, where this refers to this activity right here. Now, the cool thing is, if you want to reference a view, you can just do this bind r dot id dot let's see here what was it it was take photo button button and take photo button let me click over here so that so now this is really cool because what this does is it automatically takes care of the find view by id stuff for us so we don't actually have to call find view by id we can just declare all of the views that we have up here without having to mess up the kind of logic that we have going on in the rest of our program. 
Now, in this case, we don't actually need a reference to the button. We just want to set an on click listener on it, right? Butter knife has this built in. So we can specify this on click annotation. And then we can say, let's see, what was it? It was take photo button. This an on click annotation takes in a method on take photo button clicked. And there we go. Now, when someone clicks on the photo button, it's just going to call this method automatically. And I can prove this to you guys by making a very simple toast. Button clicked, link short. If, if you don't know what a toast is, remember that it's just a, it's just a very short notification that pops up on the bottom of uh, your Android screen. All right, so now let's uh, wait for this to load. I'm gonna hit take photo. And boom, notice that it automatically picked up the on-click listener. All right, great. Now, what we want to do is we want to launch the camera, we want to take a photo, and then we want to store it to parse. That is, it's a little tricky because there is no camera on the emulator. So what we're going to do instead is I'm just going to take photos from the gallery, or I'm just gonna take stuff from the gallery. Now, let's see here. So here's the gallery, and I, Okay, so it doesn't have any media in right now, so I'm going to need to take a picture and I'm going to need to store it in this gallery. We'll do that in the next video. Um, but for now, I just wanted to see you guys, I just wanted to show you guys butter knife. I wanted to show you guys how to create classes and parse, and I wanted to show you guys this really neat annotation stuff with butter knife. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.